Is Jesus, um, is his appearance in the Bible? Uh, I believe they describe him with like feet bronze hair. and hair was. Yeah, his feet hands. was black as brass and his hair was that of wool. James Harden? <laughs> James Harden? LeBron? Hi, I'm Gen, and I explore social and controversial issues through both sides. Today I'll be moderating this middle ground episode of Black Christians versus Black Atheists. We'll be talking about the connection between race and religion, why Christians leave the church, as well as the communities that exist within and outside of the church. The first prompt is, the black church shaped black culture. If we just look at the beginning of the civil rights movement, a lot of those black people met up in churches in order to, you know, talk about and, you know, fight for the freedom of black people. And so we have a lot of gospel music in our culture as well. I know you guys have probably heard some, even the atheists, probably grew up hearing a lot of gospel music. Even now that shapes our culture to this day. Well, I think it was even further back than just civil rights. It goes yeah. back to slavery. It goes back to so many things as a part of our history. Yeah, I think the black church fundamentally has helped African-Americans stay together. Even today, the black church serves as a central hub for African-Americans to, uh, to gather and share ideas. Even in my family, uh, the black church was definitely pivotal for our development. I think the black church contributed to the, the culture of black folks, just keeping us together as best we could, as best the church could, I think giving us hope. I think it was also a place of education for most of us as black folks, a place for talent and freedom of expression. So I definitely think it has a, a bond around us. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like there was a community significantly found um, within the church for the black community. Um, like you said, education and music. Um, there was a lot of belief, especially with what was happening during the slavery time. There was a lot of unity that brought people together and brought them hope um, in worshiping together and glorifying the Lord through that. So I believe that it definitely has shaped the black um, churches and the black community today. Yes, uh, the black church has played a pivotal role into um, our time here in the United States as black people. Um, but the black church, I believe, doesn't define us as black people. Is it necessarily the greatest thing for us? I definitely don't believe that. Well, I would piggyback off of that because uh, the black church, as we understand it within our context, is one thing. But we, what we forget is that black people and black Christians are not a monolith. So. For instance, there are 45,000 plus Christian denominations. I happen sure. to be a Roman Catholic, you know, however, I do have family that are a part of the black church. Yes. So I think that it definitely does have its extent, but it's not all encompassing as you've pointed out as well. I'm curious, would you say the same thing about black atheists as not a monolith? Well, of course. I mean, I, I think whenever you paint anyone as a monolith, you've already shut down all kinds of conversation. Mm -hmm. So there's many reasons why someone may choose it sounds like you guys might have grown up in the black church or been at least exposed yes. to it. There are many reasons why someone chooses to leave and they're not all the same. I'm curious, what is that distinction for you two? Well, I'm a black atheist and I'm an agnostic atheist, meaning that, you know, maybe there's something out there, but most likely there's probably not a Jesus or Jesus up in the sky or Jesus coming back or anything like that that's going to come and save us. Me personally, um, I study a sector of African spirituality. Right. The, re, uh, the way that I happened to stumble upon that, um, I started to ask myself questions like, who do my ancestors worship? Right. What is the point of uh, religion in general? How to proliferate around globally? Right. And um, doing research, you start to see that uh, Christianity became synonymous with white supremacy around the fourth century with Constantine, uh, the emperor. Right. And which they made it uh, the Roman national religion. If you refuse to adhere to his uh, Christian rule, then you would be beheaded. So I think that uh, historically speaking, Christianity has been used to oppress and enslave a lot of people globally. I think it's great that you take it that far back, but, but I think you have to really separate theology from black theologies for, for the sake of conversation. Because I think that when I talk to a lot of atheists and agnostics, we speak from the vacuum of black experience and we already understand in America, number one, that's troubled water, right? Globally, it's also troubled water. I think a, a broad blanket would cover that it's suppressed 
people of color. We don't see ourselves in scripture. We don't see ourselves being, you know, told. And when we did, when we were learning these stories in church back in slave times, we were told that our God wanted us to be slaves. So that very thing was utilized to suppress us. For heaven's sakes, the KKK came out of the church, right? So we do have a problem and we can't just say the church is the end all to be all. It's a complicated conversation. I With us, pick, uh, I, I, let's, let me just put a pin on that. Uh, if you, let's get to the three gears and. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I disagree that the black church has shaped black culture, especially as in the affirmative entirely. Because what that does is it it ignores our ancestors before the transatlantic slave trade. It ignores the fact that they had their own cultural beliefs and that there were many contributions that black folks have made to this country that were not centered in Christianity. When we think about Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who was the founder of Negro History Week, who was Harvard educated, who had deep criticisms of the black church. His roots were in free thought, and and criticism. Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote A Raisin in the Sun, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, the famous author, and other black folks who were not religious at all, just because it is prevalent does not mean that it has entirely shaped our, our communities for the better. And I think that we have to be mindful of the diversity that has been within our communities that has not always been rooted in Christian and religious faith. Our communities have ignored the non-religious, atheist, and humanist presence for far too long, simply because there is a prevalence of Christianity in our communities. I actually, I actually agree with you because I don't think Christianity is supposed to take hold of somebody's culture and completely, like, you know, change it into something completely different. I think that Christianity welcomes different cultures. Um, I think that. True biblical Christianity looks at somebody in a different culture and says, hey, even though you're of this culture, even though you believe in uh, different things or whatever, you can still be welcomed in the kingdom of God. You know. Well, I find it very interesting because as someone previously said, there are, what, 45,000 denominations of Christianity, mm-hmm. some that might be more welcoming and some that are totally damning. Right. And we're talking about the same book. We're talking about the same text that has been interpreted, some for that has been used in the positive and some that has definitely been used to enslave our ancestors, mm-hmm. disenfranchise our communities, mm-hmm. and also look at things through a lens that has demoralized us. Mm-hmm. So we, ha- we cannot ignore that oh, um, as far as yeah, historically. I want to speak so. to something, going back to something that you had sp- said um, about your belief systems now within the uh, African spirituality and stuff like that, which I think is wonderful, actually. And I don't think it's actually too far from some of the things that we might believe you know, as Christians, right? Mm-hmm. But there is a, a, a constantly erroneous thought that, Constantine came and did all of these things. Christians were being persecuted in Rome and in throughout, you know, the the, the Middle East, far before Constantine, right? Mm-hmm. And then that doesn't. I mean, if we're going to talk about the roots of Christianity, how do you explain the Tawahedo Church, the Ethiopian Ta- Tawahedo Church, which was never anything that was forced upon the Ethiopian people? In fact, in the Bible. You have in Acts where an Ethiopian was baptized and went to spread the gospel to all the people. Where do you think he went as an Ethiopian? Mm -hmm. You know, so there are roots of Christianity which are far beyond this conquering of Constantine and all that stuff. But what I will say in complete agreement with all of you, with everyone here, is that Christianity as a whole has been abused. It has been taken. It has been used to demoralize just because there are people who are infiltrators, just there, there are people who will use the word of God against us as people, it does not invalidate what he said and what he taught. This narrative of Christianity is the white man's religion. Mm. Jesus Christ wasn't white. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. To respond to that, I think that my point was that in the fourth century, it became synonymous with white supremacy, mm-hmm. right? So it did not spawn, right? So, so um, Christianity, as you said, was actually in Africa, right? But I believe that today, I believe that black Christians, and of course, I'm not here to disrespect any of you guys, Mm -hmm. but I believe that um, the modern iteration of Christianity, right, spawning from the uh, the, uh, Judeo-Christian belief system has forced black Christians to speak a lot of multiculturalism, to Mm -hmm. to put the idea of unity above the idea of blackness. 
right? And when you put unity above blackness, we are the ones who suffer in America. So I feel like a lot of black Christians, they don't want to talk about the history of Christianity. I believe that they want to ignore a lot of facts when it comes to Christianity. I believe that they don't want to look at it as a whole, right? So I do believe that a lot of problems do occur from yeah. this. Can you explain that a little bit further, that difference between the multicultural unity and not putting blackness ahead of it? I'm so glad you asked that, Jay. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, I think that the George Floyd protests are a perfect, perfect, perfect example to look at. Tons of unity. Tons of unity when George Floyd died. 2021, record police killings. 2022, record police killings. 2023, record police killings. When people join our fight, love everybody, be humanitarian. When people join our fight, it tends to become about unity and it tends to become about how uh, not racist America is. And, it, and uh, black issues and black politics tend to get washed away. So I have a lot of black Christians who say, let's accept everybody. Jesus told us to turn the other cheek, but they are killing us, bro. The world, like, like globally, Africans are, are, are being oppressed. It's not a joke. Uh, you, you're making a face. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I made a lot of faces. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really good stuff, and I don't even know where to, where to go back and <laughs> address yeah, some of it. It's really yeah. good stuff. So theology, right, just in a broad sense, is usually defined by either one referring to nature, experiences, tradition, and maybe scripture right? Just on a broad sense. It could be broken down even further. So I think that when we come to a place as black folks, we come and we lean heavily into our experience, right? And if all of these different sources are places where we would lean, then, we, then our pillars are a little bit out of balance if it's solely based upon what we've been through, right? So I think that we have to be a little bit more balanced. When you said that the church hasn't impacted culture, I think the church has, impact, has not impacted what we bring to church, we still hand clap, toe tap, dance, shout, run, throw wigs and everything else when you go to certain churches, right? Because black culture expresses itself a certain way. What it has done to us, and I agree to your point, is it has limited our free thought, right? Because yes. we have learned to come to church and check our minds at the door and just do church the way it does, you know, the way it goes. And if you don't get happy and shout, you ain't been to church, you ain't seen God. Yeah, so when you, when you described theology, you left out one word, which is evidence. You know, when we think about the rules of how we, how we learn, how we train, how we educate ourselves, in theology, especially within the black church and black theology, we are dismissing evidence. Where is the proof? Well, I think because that- Coming back to the prompt, you know, the idea that the church really shaped the black culture is really community did, because we didn't have spaces. So the only space that we could exist in with any kind of freedom or away from watchful eyes was being able to worship and practice. That's why we melded a lot of the practices that we had, especially in African uh, religious traditions, to Christianity so that we could continue worshiping and having these different traditions continue throughout our community. So black people have always survived and continue to advance and evolve through sticking together. Church just happened to be the place where we could kind of do that without having other people mm. in our business. It was functional. Yeah. Let's move on to the next prompt. We all possess the capacity for compassion and connection. And real connection starts with real understanding. For example, Pew Research found more Americans are religiously unaffiliated. You know, just by reading the story's summary, I learned how researchers are predicting a significant decline in institutional religion. They also listed out a Pew study so I can compare the research with how different media outlets chose to frame it. And swiping through these articles, I can read up on what this means for the separation of church and state, and even how black millennials who leave church don't necessarily give up on faith. Most importantly, I can compare how the news interpreted this research with Pew's own report. This especially is great when it's about something as personal as spirituality, which is why we are so excited to partner with Ground News. Their platform is designed to show you perspectives that you might be missing. The why, not just the what, making common ground so much easier to find. They're really great at contextualizing stories full of layers with information like a source's political lean, how reliable they are, and who owns them. I also like that I can follow both Christianity and atheism interest pages to see stories I really care about. And their blind spot feed is built to make sure that I'm not stuck in my own echo chamber and I can step into someone else's news reality, making understanding their point of view so much easier to do. Click the link in the description and check out ground.news slash jubilee to get 40% off the Vantage plan. That's $5 a month for unlimited access to the blind spot feed, which is cheaper than my daily coffee run. Thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the conversation. 
As a black person, people always assume that I'm Christian. That's really funny. It's like, oh God, God bless you, have a great day. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. I, uh, no, <laughs> just keep your religion to yourself. It's just a lack of your, your own personal bubble, right? You're in your own space. You are thinking that everyone is thinking in according to the way that you are. So you need to start expanding your bubble by asking questions, engaging in conversation, and then allowing other people to come in and have a conversation with you as well. So I live in the Bible Belt. Mm. Uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And I often get that I look familiar, that I have a familiar face, and especially from other black women. And almost the, the follow-up question is, have I seen you in church? Because that's where I spend all my time. Mm. And one of the number one questions in the South is what church do you go to? Mm. Not even that you, whether you're a believer or not, it is, yeah. the default is what church do you go to? And, and that is because even according to research, the majority of the black community is Christian and religious, mm -hmm. uh, especially in areas of the South where uh, Christianity is extremely prevalent. And that's all that is within their circle, like right. you said, the bubble. So it is, assumes, it is assumed that everyone thinks the same. Yeah, um, to add to that, uh, my father is actually a pastor mm -hmm. in, um, in Texas right now in the Bible Belt. And um, whenever I uh, just converse with a, with a black person, it's always, God bless you. Oh, I'll pray for you. It's always, um, it's, it's always a, a religious undertone on, under our conversations. I just don't tell people I'm atheist right away, just so I can just keep the peace, because there's just a good 90% of us are, are religious, not even Christians, Muslims, or things like that. And when I say I'm an atheist, or something like that. They a lot. Some people shun me. They'll just say, "Oh, I'll just, pr oh, I'll pray for you," or they'll feel, mm -hmm. they'll, oh, I, I feel kind of, I feel bad for you, kind of, kind yeah, of vibe bad. sometimes. And um, so, do you get that more mostly in between black people or other races say that to you as well? It's majority mostly black, black people. Black people. Yeah. 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 Mostly black do you guys people. find it like an offensive stereotype, or is it more so just like? Well, I think that it goes back to the last question and it goes back to how uh, mm -hmm. the black church has shaped our culture, yeah. right? I believe that during the civil rights era, of course, you had almost every single civil rights leader being um, Christian. There's tons of gospel music in the hip hop. Yeah. Kanye, Chance the Rapper, sure. you know what I'm saying? They're constantly yep. um, uh, um, sampling it. So I think that um, within black culture, you kind of cannot escape it. Yeah. I'll take this guy right here. I think the reason why I answered no to this question is not necessarily because of who I am, but where I'm at. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'll be outside a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be at a bar with some of my friends. Like, uh, this past year, I went to a pride parade. You know, I've been to clubs to dance and hang out with some of my friends. And they don't really assume that I'm Christian because I'm in some of those environments. But even though I'm there, that doesn't mean that I'm less Christian or uh, more Christian or more holio than thou. I'm just in the world, but. Yeah. But again, we talked about, and, and I mean, uh, not to just, not to bring off what happened off camera, but uh, when we introduced ourselves, you said amen. I did. That assumed that perhaps uh, that we were gonna be in agreement with that. I mean, even though there were Christians and atheists in the room, even whether it is explicitly Christianity or mm -hmm. some form of belief in itself, it is, often, more often than not assumed, that as black folks, that we all share some form of belief in some sort of deity. Can I, can I say something so, to you? Sure. What was your name again? Mandisa. Mandisa, beautiful name, by the way. Thank you. I'm just gonna say this, like that has less to do about my assumptions about you and just more about the way that I personally talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, even if I'm like around like an atheist or whatever, like it's not really a personal thing or an assumption for me to be like, amen, cause that's just how I talk. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If I have a Muslim friend who's around me and they wanna say, mashallah, they, I don't, I don't think that they're trying to offend me just yeah. because they have a different religious belief than me. And I, I say amen a whole lot, so I'm guilty of that too, yeah. but it, it isn't a thing to say like, God bless you, amen simply means I agree, you know, yes. or we are in agreement, right? It doesn't necessarily mean God, this, that, the other. So to me, it's like, if I agree with something, it's like, yeah, amen, whatever, but it's not to offend to say, oh, we're all Christians and this, that, the other. That's just the way I speak. But should that now, um, prompt you to think about why, why it is that do we it. do what we no. do. Mm -hmm. Why not though? I mean, if, if, you're, if you're in community with other people and mm -hmm. they may not share the same practices or they may not share the same customs as you do, mm -hmm. is it possible 
to perhaps think that that might not be the most appropriate thing to say at the time. No, because we live in a culture that is very much about relativism and your relative truth and being who you are and standing in that. And what you're asking me to do is not stand on who I am. It's not about personifying what someone says that's just a greeting or a passing or, a, or a, a statement of agreement. It's not wrapped in that. And if, if everyone else in this culture gets to stand in their relative truth, be who they want to be, you know, say who you are, that I should be able to do that too without thinking that I'm offending someone. But we're really not, as Americans, we're, you know, yes, we're black Americans, but they don't really want any of us to have individuality. Ultimately, it's like, get up, go to work, do your labor, come home, don't question it's 2024. anything. 2024, why would you be living in that reality though of oppression? It's 2024. We because do so many people are still open. But I mean, but and that's a mindset thing, right? Because no, I, no, it's not. I wouldn't say that so any of us, with our strong literally. personalities, each one of us on this stage, live in a, a mindset of I feel so oppressed today because I'm black. What I'm going to do? I'm black today. No, we get up and we're going to do what we have to do. We're going to go for what we want, regardless of our spiritual beliefs. I don't, I don't think that that's a that's an argument to stand Correct on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you saying that's like a victim mentality? I do. Yeah. Do you involve I, yourself in the Black Power movement? What do you what do you mean by that though? Do you involve yourself in the Black Power movement? What does that mean? Because well, there are there are essentially, issues. Essentially, do you prioritize Black politics and the Black community? I prioritize politics that I believe in. Okay, so that's why so you feel that way. That's not why not really like it's because a there are Black politicians no, that I agree with no. in anything. You cannot dim diminish what I'm saying on no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not diminishing what you're saying, right? But you said something objectively. Mm -hmm. Right. You said that that is a victim mindset mm -hmm. and it's not. And if no. you educate yourself on the black power movement and what is going on with Africans globally, you wouldn't have that mindset. Right. I think that I actually wanted to bring the conversation to a little bit of a personal experience. I remember a time when I was in eighth grade, I was speaking to my uh, social studies teacher. His name was Mr. Fada. And I told him I was Christian and he was like, oh, oh, that's cool. What kind of Christian are you? And I was like. Baptist? I got baptized in my Baptist. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, you know what, Tyler, you're probably one of the loud ones. Right. And then I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? We are loud. No, no, no. I, no. <laughs> I accepted that immediately. And that was yeah, kind of yeah. one of my first um, interactions with microaggressions. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And religious microaggressions. Yep. Right. Right. And I think that um, the parallels between how toxic it can get when you come across other Christians, even in the black community, is the same way. Yeah. Right. I feel like I feel like I can tell a beautiful black person who just became my friend that I missed the bus or my phone is off. And they're like, the devil's after you pray. And it's like, bro. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yes. I missed my paycheck. How do you <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like it's like, what are we talking about here? And a lot of family members hit me up and they're like, yo, Tyler, I need your help. The devil's after me. And after we breathe and we calm down, it's like if we put these problems on paper, it has nothing to do with spirituality at all. Yeah. It has right. to do a lot with preparation, yes. right? Yeah. Mindfulness, yeah. right? Yeah. And 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 just financial planning. Yeah. That's so, I want to go back to something real quick. Yeah. And and that's Again, it's the, the, these narratives, right, where you ask me, do you believe in the black empowerment movement? It's such a broad thing because you still have not told me anything specific, even though that was beautiful what you, sh what yeah. you shared. You are painting every black person as a monolith. No, I'm not. Yes, when you ask those questions, because I, as a black person, I'm expected to vote a certain way because I'm a woman. I'm expected to believe a certain thing. And it, it, it gives no room and it denigrates each of us as an individual and what we think. And I think that's mm -hmm. where the problem is. It's like, I can okay. care about black issues, yeah. but we may not care about the same exact things or see things differently, but it doesn't make me any less black than you. What was your name? Roxy. Roxy. Let me ask you a question, Roxy, <laughs> right? Cause, Cause you articulate yourself very well. And I'm not here to, um, to, uh, to make you qualify your blackness or to question for, uh, your blackness. That's not what I'm here at all, right? So when do you think that the concept of blackness first uh, came into the minds of African people? I'm not here for that kind of discussion because okay. that's not my expertise. Well, so, okay, perfect. Hold on. Perfect. Do you want to answer? You don't want to answer? You, that you don't want to answer? I don't want to answer. And that's also another have... problem I have with Christians when it comes to free thinking. I don't. It's have, like a lot of ducking and dodging. Yeah. But, but, but let me answer that from my perspective. Okay, right? please. So the first time that this concept of unity through blackness, I believe, uh, proliferated through Africans' minds, was when diverse Africans from West Africa were shackled together on slave ships and they mm -hmm. couldn't speak to each other. Yeah. Right. They could yes. not speak to each other. Right. But there were things that they noticed. Right. And what they notice is our hair is a certain way mm -hmm. and our skin color is a certain way. Right. The people who are doing this to us, their skin color is a different way. So when they couldn't speak and they had no cultural relevance was when blackness became With important mm -hmm. and was when black people needed to put blackness above everything else. I personally believe that black people all around the world, when it comes to intersectionality, I believe that they need to put race before anything else. You predate Jesus, you predate Muhammad, you predate as an African woman, 
every biblical figure that walked this earth. Right. So what's more of a divine command? You being black or you being Christian? And here's where I get upset. Right. Because we talk about how, oh, um, I don't want to be this a part of this black culture movement, this that, and the third and, and all these different things. And I want to explore my own experience as a black person. And, da, 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 da. and then you go to church, black church, and then there's white Jesus all over the wall. Yep. Right. And then you talk to you talk to black people and be like, what color is God? Oh, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color God is. Right. right. But it does matter if you are a woman or a man of the cloth. How does that not matter to your book? Because in the Bible, the so let me ask you something. Let's in in the that. Bible, let me finish this off with this, right? Okay. In the Bible, is Jesus, um, is his appearance in the Bible? Uh, I believe they describe him with like, his feet were bronze hair. and hair was, bronze. yeah. His feet was black as brass and his hair was that of wool. James Harden? <laughs> James Harden? <laughs> LeBron? You, what? James Harden is in the Bible? <laughs> the black church is better than the white church. Join our middle ground Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. The church has helped black people more than the government. You hesitate a little bit. Yeah, totally, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because it's like a, a two-headed sword, right? Because church is some place that we can go, gather. It is very helpful to the community in the sense of we can be there together. We can have conversations with one another. At one point during slavery, maybe the only place you can see your family or connect with one another. A lot of churches can help build different programs within the community. But I think, again, it comes back to that word of like wanting to assemble someplace, wanting to be with people that look like you. And a lot of the church movement did have to force the government's hand of like, all right, we need civil rights. So that was kind of birthed and you know pushed through in that way. So no, I don't trust the government and I don't think the government is here to help black people. I don't think the government is here to help really any poor people. And a lot of black people unfortunately are disenfranchised, so. This is interesting that all the atheists step forward for so this. So I, I go back to uh, history after yeah. slavery and reconstruction, yeah. right? So after slavery, there were blacks in Congress, you know, there was black, there was black progress. However, uh, once reconstruction ended, and there were racist people that were brought in power to dis disfranchise black, black folks. Mm -hmm. um, there were many churches in the religious community that helped support um, in times when, you know, black folks couldn't get good jobs, who could not get, uh, uh, you know, a good education, even though there were historically black colleges and universities. I, I do tend to give the church its credit at times. Mm -hmm. And again, that doesn't mean, you know, the, the black church gets to define the black community in its entirety and that it should define all of us that way. But uh, we have to give credit historically where, where it's due. due. The U.S. government has had a lot of policies to keep African Americans down mm -hmm. for the past, ever since after slavery and even before. So we also had um, redlining, which yeah. kept mm -hmm. black communities uh, poor and away from certain jobs in the inner city, white flight, all these things, all these were perpetrated and supported by the U.S. government in every single major city in the United States. But the one place that where black people, we can come and congregate was the church. It was kind of a de facto yeah. And place. get information. And get yeah. information. Yes. So my question to all of you guys as atheists who st stood up for this one for sure. is, do you guys view it as more of a lesser than two evil situation where you guys just really distrust the government? So why you guys have created this prompt? How would you answer that? Oh. See, even the way that you worded the question, the lesser of two evils, because evil is a word that gets really I, I meant that in around. just like a phrase. No, I know, right? I know, just but I, I'm just saying the underlying tones of just like, the American community, and therefore it's projecting as domination throughout the world. Yeah. Right? Let's say the lesser of two entities in this yeah. instance. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the church itself, it's about what it doesn't do. It's not about how it hurts the community, it's about what it doesn't do, not what it True. does do, True. right? So I think that with the government, for every new deal that you get, you get um, a war on drugs. For every welfare system that's, uh, that's implemented, we get cracks and gun in our community. Yeah. Right. So I believe that when it comes, the um, I believe that the black church historically has given us jobs, um, organized our movements. Without the black church, we would not be here today. Let's 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 get that straight. Exactly. Yeah. Right. They were very important, but today they don't have the same value historically. And the government just um, after the George Floyd protests, 
the two major bills that were passed, even though they passed a thousand oversight bills for police, uh, police brutality, the main bills that they passed was, I believe, an Asian hate bill and an LGBTQ hate bill. <laughs> so I don't think that the government is necessarily, I believe that it's too overstretched. And also, let's um, let's let's take it to the reparations um, discussion. Yeah. About how there were supposed to be reparations after yeah. slavery. Yeah. I still want my forty, 40 acres, acres and a mule. Forty, 40 acres and a mule. mule. And, Give me and my forty so acres and a mule. And <laughs> that was thwarted yeah. through the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. So we can definitely even point to that. And we are still having this discourse yeah, about yeah. reparations and economic justice <laughs> that we shouldn't be having now, yeah. that the federal government could have yes. resolved yeah. a exactly. while, long time let's, ago. And still we'll hold, could. Let's, let's hold, yes. um, let's bring the disagreeers. Would anyone like to start? Yeah, I'm a little bit neutral when it comes to this standpoint because I feel that there was a lot of redlining. You brought up such a great point. When I was exposed to the amount of redlining that the government had imposed on black communities, minority communities, especially what's happening up in San Francisco right now, up in New York, it was it was bizarre. Um, and that had pushed a lot of Christian churches, a lot of churches in, in general, to open up assistant living, open up um, food uh, shelters and home shelters for, for assisting in people that the government wasn't doing. But at the same time, the church was also pushing this on the government, um, on their local legislators and their mayors to also make uh, movements and propositions to do that. So it's kind of like this fine line between both. I don't trust the government. I don't trust also completely like people who run the church because they're not all good people. They're not all good people that who we elect as well into um, our branches and legislator governments and stuff. So there's just this neutrality that I'm sit between with because is it really going to benefit or are these just propositions to just just temporarily save someone's butt and then go on to the next and then just continue to like put the bandaid on the big scar? I, I ask myself, why didn't I walk up in, in favor of the church doing more and at the risk of giving any ammo for the other side? <laughs> no, <laughs> at the risk, I, I think I look at the church um, with a very critical eye. I think that I um, I'm troubled by what we do and what we don't do. I'm troubled by how we do some of the stuff that we do and we miss the bigger pictures, right? And, and so I, for that reason, I had, to, I had to just hold back and say, I don't think that we're doing all that we should be doing. Sorry to interrupt, but what are some specific examples of that? I, I think that we've gotten into this Western world mentality where church now is, is gimmicky. I think that it's about um, becoming so seeker friendly um, and we, we, we play to certain audiences, we play to certain things. Um, we code switch organizationally, if, if you, you know, can believe that. Uh, you can have a church over here where everybody is praying for healing, but everybody's broke. This church over here is a church of prosperity. This church over here is a church of tongue talking. So you've got these different characteristics that if there's no balanced theological view of it, and so I think the church runs the risk of showing up impotent in mm -hmm. some of the conversations that we need to have. I, How much I, money does your church make a year? This is important. How much money does your church make a year? I don't have that number at the top of my mind. I wasn't coming to talk about the budget. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's very important. The reason why I bring it up is because we're talking about what the black community, uh, what the black church does for the community, right? And if you are taking money, from, uh, from the black participants who go to your church, you should know how much money you're taking from the community, especially since the community uh, isn't financially stable. Yeah. But also churches that make over $100,000 per year should do exactly what the black church used to do during the civil rights era. So, I think, I think so, that's a harsh so criticism. I think, it's a, I think it's a huge assumption. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Finish. So, so churches that do make over $150,000 a year, they need to invest that money in the black institutions. Yeah. With all due respect, wait, wait, $150,000. I do want to hear from the response. Wait, wait. What, how would you you can about? start a bank with that. How would you respond? I think we have to be careful about drawing assumptions of what churches do. I was making a very broad commentary about how I see churches behave, but don't get me wrong, there are a lot of churches that are doing exactly what you just said they should be doing. Turkeys it, and shoes aren't enough well, for our community. Well, well, see, I can't get into that part of it because turkeys and shoes are not the conversation I'm having. I'm having a conversation about a methodology to reach a people and be a service to a community. I'm talking about down payment assistance so that black folks can own homes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about doing financial stewardship education courses. I'm talking about, you know, counseling and support systems for family and standing in the gap for mothers with single, the, the single mothers with children mm -hmm. and making sure that they have mentors for their sons and their daughters. I'm talking about programs that actually affect folks' lives. Yeah. But yeah. meanwhile, you're on a different page and I get that. I get that, but I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't brush that very broad because there are a lot of ministries that are doing it. What I'm looking at is the impact of the way this division amongst the body of Christ actually shows up in the world. I think it shows up a little bit less impotent than it should. And on, my, on, on behalf of the body of Christ, I apologize that you've seen that more than you've seen the effective work. Is yeah. that fair? No. 
<laughs> no, 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 it's not fair. And once again, once we, uh, when you dive into this with Christians, I, I, I often feel that there's this, this neglect for politics. Jesus was a fighter. Jesus was a fighter. He was He's not anti -capitalist. pacifist. He was not pacifist. He was right. anti-capitalist, right? So, so, so all what you're saying is very good. And I respect the fact that you are a leader, right? And that you do own your own black church, right? But there needs to be more. I, I, I don't want you just meeting with mothers, right? If my grandma is, is funding her own displacement every single time right. she donates to the church and they put their money at Chase Bank. Yeah. You understand that, right? I guess, like, what specifically would you like? What's the more that you're looking for within yeah. the churches I for need, the black community? I need, I need that, I need the church to put their race. I need all black Christians yeah. to put their race either on the same level or a or above Christianity politically, not socially, politically. Yeah. Right. We need to, as a pastor, you need to preach that the church needs institutions. Otherwise, every single time that our grandmas go and pay tithes, they are funding their own displacement. How is that better than white supremacy, though, if you're asking us to be supremacists about being black people? Who said anything? Well, you brought up do white supremacy. Do you, you know what supremacy up, entails? Yes, yeah, I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about to <laughs> yeah. say. However, you, you have brought up white supremacy several times, but now you're saying put your blackness about, above everything. Black is the only way yes. to think about it. And that's, yes. that is yes. a supremacy in and of itself, no, it's which I can respect your, your, your opinion on that, mm -hmm. but I don't operate just because of my blackness. There's so much more to me as a human, a woman, yes. and other things, an American. Yes. Like there are things that are intersectional about me as a person in this world that's not just everything has to be about my race. Mm -hmm. And I have a problem with that. In does that, that thought in general, that mm -hmm. everything must be seen through the eyes of being black. And if you don't, you get your black card. Well, I think this what he's crazy. trying to say. Let is, me answer. Yeah, go ahead. So I never told you to use your blackness to make anybody else feel inferior by the way of their race. So no, no, I'm not spreading black supremacy. And I find it often that racist white people and black people in the church love to call me racist, bro. I'm not even. Love to call me racist and it's supremacy. I'm not what, what, what the church, though. Let's, that's the thing. I'm yeah. not the Wait, hold church on, hold on. in the way that they're trying to label me. Let him clarify. Yes. Go for it. So what I'm saying is that if you are a part of the black power movement and if you are conscious of what goes on in the black community, then there is no way in hell that you will put being gay over being black. You will put being a Christian over being black. You will put being a woman over being black. You, the, you can get disabled. You can get disabled. But that's about it. That's about it. But there have, is no reason in the world. You have black people whose entire identities on their sexuality and being gay as well. So what about that? The reason why. You don't have why, a problem with that because if they're not Christian, then it's okay to be gay and black, right? It depends on how you oh, align yourself depends. politically. I just yeah. said you guys it can depends. be Christian. You but guys can but be Christian, but you need to prioritize blackness. Stance. Isn't our existence more than our political stance? That's it's force it's, fed to you, brother, no, to no, be No, 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 it's my belief. It's well thought out. I believe that who I am as a person has, is, is very much more broader than what you're describing I should be. Right. I think that I, I just do. Now, am I for the cause and the advancement of black folks? Absolutely. How? Glo globally. How? I, I'm not here to prove my blackness to you. I'm no, here to talk about I'm talking about the difference, be the chasm between you and I with yes. the belief system. And yes. what I'm saying is, well, I respect you. You got to respect me for this conversation to be fluid. Absolutely. Right. Because I'm not challenging you or, or diminishing what you believe. I'm listening to you and I understand your come from. But the only way we experience another, another culture is that we explore our commonalities. So I get your passion. I get your passion and I, de I definitely do the work in our community. And if you're suggesting that we should probably do other work, then let's have that conversation because having a conversation that makes me feel like I need to surrender my black card is a conversation that gives us more of a chasm so we never get there together. Why in the that face of pro-blackness, why in the face of pro-blackness, everyone else's blackness feels diminished? That's insane to me. No, because it's the That's What I'm it's saying is that a portion, of what you say. a portion, a portion of your energy and time needs to politically go into black institutions and black politics in order for us to get a foothold in the Says country. you, but no. you're not an authority no. for me. You're not an right. authority no, my for brother says black political folks. science. No, 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 political science step, isn't my authority. Let's take a step back, because I think we're getting too wrapped up actually in the black part of it right now. And I think ultimately I understand a lot of what you're saying and you're specifically talking about capitalism, right? No. And how it affects black people in the world. No, no. no. okay. So you are talking about putting blackness above everything else politically do you guys feel like um, do you guys feel like uh, black people and Africans are oppressed globally? Yeah. And in America? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So 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 we all have that common belief, right? Okay. So 
system, uh, systemically, right? The only way for us to beat systemic racism is for us to get institutions of our own, right? The only way for us to get out of this oppression, right, is for us to stop playing around with everyone else's beliefs and ideologies and focus on an Afrocentric belief. That's what I'm saying. You guys can do whatever you want, love everyone, be whatever type of intersectionality that you would like to be, right? But if you support Israel and Gaza, if you're putting that on your story, then I need you to put the Congo on there as well. Yeah. I well, need Africa, you to put Haiti on there as well. You know how many black Catholics are being murdered by other black Africans in Nigeria Thank right you. now. Thank you. So it let's is, talk but, but, about no, that. But you, but you haven't said anything about this. It's all about what's going on in the blackness. You're assuming that we don't think about these things. Mm -hmm. I think about these things. I know I'm highly aware of them. I'm highly sensitive. So it's not fair for you to say that just because we're black Christians or we're black American Christians or whatever, that we don't think about these things. We do. We might see things in a different way or a different, you know, way just, of, of solution. But I just it doesn't mean that we're people, not there. We, we don't think it's important. I just Last feel as thoughts. black. Yeah. I just feel as black people in our community, we put an overly emphasis on Jesus and on yeah. the church. And like and in, in a lot of poor black communities, you'll see a bunch of churches. But you know what you won't see? You won't see a bank. You won't see a, a hospital. Store. You won't even see a grocery store with like good food. You know, you go to a liquor store or something, there's an error behind the liquor store. There's yeah. people that don't look like us. These are issues that aren't even addressed by the church. It's like, they, like sometimes I feel I go to a church, they don't even care sometimes. You know, they just want more members, you know. And as a person who grew up in a black community and grew up in a, in a, in a black church, I understood these problems even when I was young. You know, so these are things, these are problems that us as black people need to come together and figure out and stop building so many churches in our communities. How many Ab Ebenezer Baptist churches are there? Right. You know and what I'm right saying? We don't need you, that. You, we need, yeah. If you're going Last to walk time. as Christians and have the black church, there, there should be, we should be helping the poor. We should be helping the orphans. We should be helping the widow. We should be helping the single mothers. We should be helping the disenfranchised. And that is a part of Christianity. And the fact that that is not happening, I totally agree that that is a, that is a problem. So we are absolutely on the same page about that. I have considered exploring other religions or leaving the church. Well, I have left the church because I grew up in it. It wasn't for me. I, especially once I became a high schooler, started hanging out with different crowds of people and seeing how different people live, expanding your bubble. And I had my first um, friend that identified as being LGBTQ. And my parents did not like that. Couldn't, didn't want me hanging around this person. And it was strictly because they believed that because they were homosexual, they were going to lead me into a life of sin and that person's going to die and go to hell and be punished just because of their lifestyle. And then I was already questioning, even when I was a little kid, things about the church. And because of that one fact, I was like, I can't keep doing this. I need to be somewhere where people feel accepted because if it's something with some sexuality, then I could go to another church. It could be something with my blackness or being a woman or something else. There's always going to be some dividing factor. I also went through a lot of trauma. I had lost like three people that I loved all like in a row. Um, and the question kept coming up of, yeah, what does happen to us after we die? I don't just think that it's a heaven and a hell. There has to be something more than this. Yeah. And when I brought up these questions within the church, I was really like shunned for it, pushed away, um, or people just didn't have an answer for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, I began to see that fear even within my own parents because they didn't want to question their belief. That's a cornerstone for them. That's their comfort. I feel like for me, um, I've questioned leaving the church early on in my uh, early years of, of faith. My parents went through a really nasty divorce um, so much that it had scarred my mom that she has walked away from religion in general. She has walked away from God and um, doesn't, doesn't go to church. I think my brothers have seen that and they are now grown young adults and they don't uh, believe in that as well. Um, and there was a low point in my life where I tried to reach out to people and I just wasn't getting the answers. I wasn't understanding uh, my purpose and my reason in life where I was second guessing my existence. Naturally, we are curious beings. And so I was just naturally diving deeper into my word, diving deeper into understanding like, why am I going through what I'm going through? And is this something that I blame God or is this something that is the free will and the sin that is just corrupted in, in humanity um, that I have no control over, but there's still choices that I can make that can overcome the challenges that I'm going through. Um, so that's personally with the church that like, yeah, I've experienced. I left that. the Catholic church. I left it. 
And what I didn't leave was a, was a central belief in God. Mm. So I was more agnostic than I was Christian, Catholic. And the reason why I left it was because of the rhetoric that I constantly heard. I, was in a, I grew up in a protected bubble, okay? I grew up in the Catholic church. I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. I went to Fordham University, a Jesuit Catholic college, right? But for me, it was more of that question of how dare you as a black person believe in white Jesus. So I, for myself, okay, show me what you got. I went through Islam. I even went to the five percenters, okay? Yeah, Had the, yeah, 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 The Israelites, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Buddhism, oh, okay. And I even went to the black church because I figured if I'm gonna be Christian, I'm black. Why are you a Catholic? Go to the black church. So my favorite place to go outside of the Catholic church is West Angeles, honey, okay? I'll be in there, that is my spot. But what changed for me? How did I get back to Catholicism? Well, we all believe in communion as Christians is that that's something that we, we hold for ourselves. And when we had communion at West Angeles, this is where we have some divide between all of us, right, as Christians. The presence of Christ in the Eucharist is something that for me was a real thing that I cannot let go because of what he told us scripturally. So I think for me, my experience, even though I left, I was in apostasy for a while, I have an appreciation for whatever, and a respect for whatever it is that you feel you are called to, so. Do you think this human experience of religion is due to the discomfort of death that humans have? Yes. 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 Well, it, but, but, yeah. but for, for Christians, Christianity, we are not afraid of death. Mm -hmm. We look forward to death. I am looking mm -hmm. forward to the day I die. Girl, we scared. We scared. No, 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 Let me finish that. My father died. My father died the day before my birthday last year. It was a shock to me. But for me, I know where my father is as a man who believed in God to the day he died. He is with him. In my belief, he is with him. I will see him again. So. I, I think as an, as an atheist, I'm even, I'm scared of the concept of death or like the process of dying because it is such an unknown. I, I, I try to spend more of my time thinking about what I'm doing while I'm alive so that when that time does come, um, you know, one thing I've always said is that the, the only life after our deaths are the legacies we create while we're here. Mm -hmm. That's what lives on, whether it is whether it is good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the, the concept of death, yeah, I mean, or like the process, it still scares me. I, I'm more curious. That there's a reason, I think that there's a reason for that. I, I don't think death is supposed to happen to us. Mm -hmm. At, like, yeah. As a Christian, all of us humans, we have this visceral reaction to it because that's not how things were supposed to be. If we go back to the garden and, the and all those things, it's, 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 the sin it's the sin nature of humanity, you know? I have more of a curiosity and an excitement for once it happens, because to me, this is hell. Like being a, a spirit stuck in a body <laughs> on this planet with all these people being super decisive. I think the only reason they get me to come back down here is like, you can eat food again. <laughs> you can go to Paris. In, in a way that we, I think that there's a difference between saying like, I appreciate death and the concept of death and, and, and what it is, then saying like, I actually want to die. I feel like right. like everybody, nobody wants to die. Right. But yeah, like, right. yeah. we can still sit but here I mean, and appreciate it. But if you're in pain, what, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on well, I never really thought about joining another religion because I was born and raised in the church mm -hmm. and very strict into the church. You know what I mean? Like I went to church every day, you know, black church, you're there all day. It wasn't until I, I joined the military and I had a black friend who was an atheist and I've never met a black atheist ever in my life. And he, you know, he planted little seeds, you know, and he was like, Darius, you were born and raised to believe this. This is all you know. You were beaten with this Bible and they tell you that it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Even though there's really no evidence of God actually really existing. I started to think about the concept of hell and good and evil. And I started to go through life situations and realize a lot of things aren't black and white at all. No. And you know, you can devote your life to a God and go to church every Sunday and pray and do everything and you can find something in heaven. That's a good comforting thought. You know, and but the reality is, there's no proof of any of it. Blaze Pascal, you know, I, I want to put a, let, a let cherry talk. on that. Let him okay. talk. <clears throat> Me personally, I went to church until I was 14 years old, twice a week, right? So mm -hmm. every Sunday and every Wednesday, mm -hmm. right? My ass was in the church, right? From 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 very young, you know, uh, from graduating from Sunday school to actually being around the adults and things yeah. like that. We probably all gone through that process. Yeah. Once I started to engage in free thinking, and once I got into my uh, former teenage years, around like 16, 17, and I was able to kind of um, get away from my family and get into being really into the uh, black power struggle, 
right? And I found myself um, identifying with my community, right? And so when I realized black Christians that I came across were more obsessed with people being gay in the church, mm -hmm. was more obsessed with what the images of Jesus look like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they had no time essentially for um, the things that I believe will help our community. And so I started to dive into different religions. Mm -hmm. The first religion I dove into was Islam, right? Because I remember going to Harlem and seeing black Israelites mm -hmm. on the streets, right. Yeah. right? And those were the first people who cultivated a sense of blackness in me, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, and, and it wasn't embarrassing, but then I realized that there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of toxicity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I started to go to Eastern religions and things like that. And eventually I decided to connect my conscious being right with my mental being. That's what left me to African spirituality. And it was everything that I personally um, needed, right? In order for me to um, continue to engage with everyone like I love them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of hate. There, there's a lot of hate on the underside of religion. Mm -hmm. So there is a French philosopher, his name is Blaise Pascal. And he has something called Pascal's Wager. Uh, and I think that you can, you can relate to this, regardless of your faith belief. He says that you can make the choice that it's for yourself, that it's better to believe in a God, that there's something, at least that there's something greater than this human condition. Because at the end of the day, what it's going to force us all to do is to look at each other as human beings, to serve mankind with kindness, with charity, with care, right? Helping those in need and to be rewarded at the end of the day that there is a God. But if there is no God, guess what? You still left a legacy of hope on the planet, whether there was a God or not. Yeah. And that's how I think that's we the whole see. what if you're wrong thing. It's like an insurance policy for yeah. something but that you're still you the have. Same way. There is there is that's like an insurance policy for something that you still do not know exists, and that's we hear that from can, a lot of Christians. You, the whole can you can you explain everything? Because I, I'm cannot, not trying to explain everything. You can't explain everything, everything of the world but, either, you know, but, you know, but you going, understand uh, science. Uh, let's let her talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. So this is the year that assumes. Once again, that if you don't believe in God, that you're not good. That doesn't and say that. that. Yes, it, Wait, that, but uh, it's fundamental exactly. to our, but sorry to cut you off, but I, I feel a lot of this, like this, this belief that says that like, oh, you're not good if you don't believe in God. Christians believe that they're not good without God either. Like we're, none of us are, none of us are good in our, in our own right. So to say right. that like, oh, Christians now have this pedestal to stand up and say like, hey, I'm better than you now. Mm -hmm. No, That's you're not. It's God, no, no, listen, <laughs> they're wrong. Yeah. Christianity is inherently racist. I look at it from a legal perspective as uh, Christianity, as it has been, it was built into law Mm -hmm. in the United States to classify the, the enslaved captives that came over, that were brought over, transported over from the continent of Africa and used to justify the enslavement as well as the mistreatment of, of darker skinned people mm -hmm. um, using the curse of Ham mm -hmm. that is in the Bible, even though mm -hmm the description of Jesus himself was not white as is depicted in, 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 in popular culture. But the Christianity as we know it today and the distinct differences between um, certain non-black non people and, and black folks and other people of color and the conditions of our community certainly imply that it is, it is racist. Even within the Old Testament, you're looking at these different groups of people, different tribes going to war with one another, and even, you know, saying that my God wants you to be completely snuffed out. So yeah, it's always been wielded in a way that's been inherently racist. I think this is an interesting point because I do agree in many ways, not that Christianity, Christianity is inherently racist, but that it was used in very racist yeah. ways to suppress people and oppress people and enslave people. Mm -hmm. So I, I absolutely do agree with that. Um, and, and I think that another narrative, slavery in the Atlantic slave trade also gets very sticky because you also had African slaves and tribes who were betraying their own people to give them away to these colonizers and more. So, I mean, it's like, there's so much murkiness in that entire conversation that it's like one side over the other, who's the lesser of two evils kind of thing, right? <laughs> those who, who are enslaving, plus those who slowed their, their families to the slavery, you know? Well, there, there were a number of um, captives that were kidnapped 
Mm -hmm. um, th so they weren't necessarily given over. It, it, like you said, it does, it, it does become a very, very murky and very ugly history yeah. overall. And so I, I definitely agree that, uh, but yes, the justification, especially through the Catholic Church mm -hmm. in one of the papal bulls, which actually endorsed the transatlantic slave trade. That is historic, that is a fact. Right, right. And so we have to, you know, we, we cannot ignore that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's, that's, that's a good point mm -hmm. because even as Christians, regardless of our denominations, we have to look at the ugly parts and stand in it and admit it and, and that yeah. these were wrong and this happened, not try to excuse it. Right. So I don't disagree with you on that. Right. There are some really ugly things that the Catholic Church certainly did, and I don't deny that. And the only thing that I would disagree on is the fact that I, it, listen, I'm going to get it on the internet. I know Jesus was not white, y'all, okay? So you can't <laughs> yeah, tell right. me my God is a white man. So yeah. inherently in what it is, I don't see the racism in the original, you know, but how it's been used? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think it's important if you have a kernel of truth, and I don't know that we'll all even agree with what that kernel of truth is, mm -hmm. and someone or something falls away from that truth, does, does it make the truth ineffective? Or does it make the falling away the most ineffective thing. Does that make sense? In other words, if there is a God, and I believe there is, but if there is a God and someone distorts that understanding or concept of God, does it make the God ineffective or does it make what they've done in falling away from that kernel of truth? There's a very simple way that this could be resolved, right? If there is, if there is any type of God, right? It could very much be cleared up by them, by them appearing and, and dispelling all of these discourses, all of these different beliefs, all of these different, and, and um, we, it, it could possibly end the conversation or it could end all of this discourse right here. <laughs> I, I disagree uh, yeah. <laughs> because we believe that he already did that. Yeah, it, it's, you know? it's, well, really, so, it's really common too in the whole We Testament. already believe that and yeah. they killed him. So yes, it's like, because of that. yeah. And, and I agree, a, there's, there's a lot of evidence that shows in that. I mean, you guys were talking about evidence uh, earlier and there's evidence in the Old Testament how the angel of the Lord had come in, how he had transformed Saul's life into Paul. There's a lot of evidence in seeing the the, the bush burning on fire, Moses speaking to Moses. Um, and so there is a lot of in that belief of understanding where Christ has come from and revealed himself through that, through Old Testament. The Bible is a book that is that does not have footnotes. Mm -hmm. It does not have points of reference, yeah. which means that it mm -hmm. is a book of allegory. It is a book yeah. of stories. It is a book of things that cannot necessarily be replicated today. You can't see this. No one can talk through a burning bush today. If that could be replicated today, then maybe we could see the validity in that. Well, maybe if you have some DMT, which <laughs> kind of leads into a lot of my own personal belief system, because I don't actually identify as atheist. I'm probably more agnostic than anything. Mm -hmm. And in recent years, I've come into a lot of African spirituality by way of Ifa, which a lot of people in West Africa would practice some form of Ifa. Mm -hmm. It gets, you know, translated through the slave trade as, um, Santeria in Cuba, mm -hmm. it's showing up in hoodoo and voodoo throughout, you know. Which the, the church South. deemed as witchcraft. Exactly, exactly. Which it does have elements of that when you get into it, but it's misconstrued and that lens of Christianity being put on those things has given it a lot of negative connotation when we really did that to have survival and a way to still connect to our culture. And a lot of it still was able to survive through sharing that belief system. Can I, can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Liberian. So like my parents, they're from Liberia. They're, mm -hmm. they're African. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I grew up with a lot of Nigerians as well from the Igbo tribe, mm -hmm. you know? And I see, and I don't know, are you, are you black uh, American as yes. well? Like, okay, cool. So I see this, this trend of people coming into African spirituality as if to say that that's something that even people in West Africa like believe in mm -hmm. but if you interact with those people like the african people that are over here now yeah they probably like don't. they 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 don't in yeah, fact they they, don't. they they also see it as they also a lot of them also see it as witchcraft because they've also been colonized mm -hmm. no, well see that's that's another thing right mm -hmm. if we're going to talk about colonization then we can't take away those black africans freedom to also choose a religion for themselves no you know? they can totally so choose it's, for themselves that's yeah so like issue. so to say that they're 
colonized and that's why they believe what they believe, I feel like you're looking down on their ability to choose and understand right and wrong for themselves. But it's just and a I kind fact of that, that they were just colonized, specifically Nigeria, because the majority of what I know about myself, my people did come from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that was colonized by the British. So see so how you have the ability to look at your beliefs, and even if colonization had some type of oppressive thing on you, you still have the ability to choose whether or not that you, uh, that you believe in that. So do the Africans that are over there. They have the ability to look at their colonization, figure out what parts of their culture are disconnected from their religion, and they can still celebrate it. I want to go a little bit into my personal story because I know I'm going to rant a little bit. But I grew up in a African Liberian Pentecostal church in Minnesota. And over there, there's so much culture like we like not even a drip of it. Did I did I even understand that there was like whiteness like involved? You know, I, I we we have the same food. We sing our Christian songs in the same in a different way than like white churches do. Even sometimes when I went to different white churches, I would be confused as to why they're not singing it the way that we're singing it. <laughs> and so to say that like Christianity is this thing that deletes culture at its roots, I completely disagree with that yeah. because that's where I grew up in. Yeah. Do black atheists have a response to that? Well, there are different. I mean, th that's similar to how the black church is here in the United States, right? The Catholic Church probably does not do as much singing as as like maybe oh, a Baptist. Got, oh yeah, no, we got, got we, we okay. got gospel well, masses out yeah. here. <laughs> okay, in LA. okay. But there, yeah. okay. Well, that's, well, that's interesting to know. But there are yeah, there are definitely some cultural differences in the way Black folks practice, and and that part of that is due to the racism because Black folks weren't allowed in certain white churches. What we don't understand about like white supremacy and colonization that at times it, it's mental. Yeah. It can be mental. So even if it isn't overtly someone physically oppressing you, when we talk about the institutional practices, it means that it is ingrained mm -hmm. into your mentality that it doesn't matter who it is. It, even in your Pentecostal practice, if you mm -hmm. are still worshiping Jesus, 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 and there are a lot of evangelical, like even on the continent now, where they are still putting white Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think in, the, in Ghana, there is a yeah. huge statue of white true. Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even if it is a predominantly black practice, it is still sort of rooted in a in a Eurocentric and white mentality, and we have to think about that. Yeah, okay. exactly. I think that's a response. Well, to the actually, let him, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask, like, what carryovers? And I'm actually very curious about this. What carryovers do you see from uh, white colonization that you see in African uh, practices today, other than white Jesus? Because we can look at white Jesus and be like, I can even dis I can even agree that we should probably put up less white Jesuses up in churches, mm -hmm. up in black churches, up in African churches. But separate from that, what do you think is being deleted from our culture and our cultural expression of Christianity by adopting that into our belief system? So it's the way we treat women. Exactly. It's the way we treat children. Yeah. It yeah. is the way that inherently we kind we still don't stick together as well as yeah. we should. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that are holdovers from from colonization, from enslavement that has been used to divide and conquer mm -hmm. us. The way we still other each other in a lot of ways. The one thing that we hear as atheists is that we're trying to be white. Yeah. We hear that, well, you're, you're rejecting your blackness as an atheist, which is the yeah. furthest thing from the truth. Yeah. It is my blackness that defines my atheism. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is because I care about black folks and the black community, no, and, and even in our diversity, that makes that 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 has defined or that has determined my conclusion. I'll just say that like sometimes we conflate like general human nature. And I don't mean to disregard everything that you're saying, mm -hmm. because I still think tribalism exists outside of Christianity. I still think misogyny out exists outside of uh, Christianity. I think racism exists outside of Christianity and all of these other things. So a lot of the times what you're seeing is general human nature. Um, coming atop a, a belief system that preaches love and it dilutes it because that's who we are as humans. We're gonna take something that's meant for love and we're gonna take something that's meant for unity, not uniformity, and we're gonna use that to, to um, destroy like our relationships with other people. But the reason why I call myself a Christian is because I can look at a standard that's much higher than myself to say, hey, even though I have a lot of these uh, differences with other people, we're all the same under God. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, move on to closing statement. Yeah. For me, oh, remain right. curious, ask questions, do your own research. We should be creating things that we want to see out in the world, ways that we want to replicate 
goodness, love, charity, taking care of one another. So ultimately that's what's most important and why we always gotta make God a he, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love the conversation. I love the individuality. I love the, 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 um, the commitment to it. I don't have a heaven or hell to put anyone in. I have a personal relationship and I throw it out and I share it and hopefully it makes a difference for the other person. And if it doesn't, he's given them the, ch the right to not choose it. As we discover who we are as black people, as we discover who we are as people, as we probe into the divine, whether or not it's the universe, whether or not it's some other form of spirituality, that being open to the revelation that I am bigger, I am better and e eternal life is mine, whether or not that is the reincarnation or whether or not that is in living with him eternally. So I think that everyone here has uh, beautiful backgrounds and they all gave beautiful stories, you know, and um, my 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 final thought is just that um, when it does come to black Christians with the historical value of the black church, I do believe that it is inherent for black Christians to dedicate a portion of themselves to the black power struggle and the black movement. And that is my final thought. My brother, thank yo, you, thank yo, you, thank 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 you, thank